to all of my fellow guppy breeders and fellow hobbyists. I come to you today again from the Musso Fish Room Number Two, uh, now in South Gordon, in Michigan. Uh, I started my Facebook channel besides just to display some of my fish. Uh, I've had plans on giving some informational videos out. I finally just now get a little bit extra time with the holiday season here to uh, make some videos up for you regarding that topic. The first topic that I wanted to cover uh, is a big one. Everybody's always looking for the next best and greatest thing um, in terms to get some size on your fish. How do you get size? What are you feeding? That's anytime I get into um, a group of gut breeders, especially on the, on the show circuit, go to the shows, uh, they're all wanting to know, uh, talking to each other about what they're feeding. And um, that's why I thought it would be a good topic to first cover. Um, my father and I for years have been known to be two of the breeders in the IJ show circuit that have created uh, a, lot of, a lot of big fish. Uh, or a lot of the bigger fish on the show than always. Um, everybody's kind of like, how you do it? I've had so many people come in my room in years past and just see the size of the fish and just can't, um, can't, almost can't believe their eyes, you know? Um, and really, there's not a whole lot of secret to it. Um, first and foremost, no matter what you decide to do, you got to have a regular uh, scheduled feeding routine of some sort. Uh, you got to get out there, you got to feed it, feed these fish several times a day. They will eat every hour guppies if you let them. Uh, and the more you can gut pack them and keep up a load of nutrients in them, no matter what you're feeding, you're, you're going to get more size on your fish. So when it all boils down to it, the first and most important thing strict, uh, being strict uh, on, the, on yourself and keeping the feeling schedule and you gotta get off off, uh, off the phones, off the computer, walk on in here near your aquarium and feed the fish all the time of the day. Um, you always can find time, you can always get your fish up to some size even if you work a really busy schedule. I work um, 13 hour days, I got about a 40 minute drive, one way to work, um, five days a week usually. Um, so even with that, I am able to find my way into the fish room feed. It's usually right before I go out the door uh, and right when I get home. Uh, and then if I'm up in between, you know, the work days start and finish, then I will also come in here and make another feed. And on my off days, I try to get in and feed um, three to four times a day minimum. Now, the number one food, the most important to getting size on your gut is to really want to maximize your size. You got to feed baby brine shrimp. Live baby brine shrimp. There's no food out there that can match the nutrition level of baby brine shrimp that just finished hatching all the way out to about 12 hours after it initially hatched. It's the optimal time to be feeding baby brine shrimp. And there's no food, I don't care what anybody says, the scientific nutritional facts are all out there on the web to look for. There's no replacement, nothing that will ever match baby brine shrimp in its shells. The difference between somebody who feeds it and somebody who does not, you will see it in their fish, the size of their fish, the overall healthiness of their fish. Um, so, no matter what, if you want to get there, you've got to feed baby brine shrimp. I feed baby brine shrimp twice a day. And I don't just feed it, I feed a lot of it. Uh, high percentage, uh, 
really want to pack their guts by a and have that food available as much as possible. I don't mind, that's one food you can get away with to some degree, overfeeding because it'll live in the water column and you'll see it along the front of the glass for several hours um, live but it's just instant available food of the highest quality available to them and just as fresh right there um, so that's just another added benefit of being a bright shirt besides you know it being the absolute best thing to feed so number one if you want like i said if you want big size on your fish get into feeding live bait your bright shrimp it's not that hard um and ultimately for what you get out of the food it's cheap uh anybody can say 45 dollars for a pound can shrimp meat really cheap but it is because of what you're really getting out of it and what it'll do for you. It's it's the cheapest food on the market, my opinion. Um, one big secret of feeding big brine shrimp, and a lot of people don't realize this and skip this step, is you want to feed a good quality dry food before, right before feeding your baby brine shrimp. Otherwise, what happens is, is that food, big red shrimp, can almost be like a laxative. And it'll move through them really quick uh, before they really get a chance to absorb all of those nutrients uh, in the big red shrimp. Uh, and work through their system extremely quick. So what I usually do is come in about 20 minutes before, maybe a little bit more. I pull my, first thing I'll do is I pull the air in my brain shirt and I'll walk around and I'll feed the tanks with the dry food. And at that time, I may take the time to uh, do some other work I need done in the fish room, or I may just go back out the fish room, go do something else around the house, and I'll come back 20 to 30 minutes later after they've had some time to get some of that dry food in their system. Now, that dry food will fill their belly, and the brine shrimp absolutely packs them because the brine shrimp have live moving brine shrimp going throughout the water. They cannot resist it no matter how full they are. They, if it's just first of that day you put them in the water, they are gonna be going after it. So you do want to feed that dry food beforehand because it helps hold that nutrients in them. When you mix it with another food that's not processed as quick, it holds that high nutrients in their gut longer. That baby brown trip in their gut cannot move through as quick. So they can absorb the most out of that baby brown trip. Um, so, now since we're talking, okay, so dry food, yeah, you go on the market, there is thousands of different dry, uh, dry foods out there, plate foods. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're feeding the food that if you're, if you're in the coffee set, they can actually get in their mouths and pull them to eat, and it's not going to go to the bottom and sit there. Um, besides from just the food that they like or high protein, it's got to be the right size food for them. And finer food is, the more it's able to pack into a space. It's kind of like putting um, marbles into a jar or filling that jar with sand. Which one's going to pack that space? And we got to look at that as their, their stomachs. Uh, I'm good at packing some food. <laughs> so, um, if you really want to pack your food, and you want to really find food, especially for your fry and your younger guppies, um, really find that same fine food is perfectly fine for your older fish, your big females. Um, it's great. Uh, it just lets them get more of it into them easier. And the easier something goes down, the easier it is to, to eat. Um, we all know that. So it's something you like, it's something small, and you just sit there and may eat a bag of chips like nothing. Uh, I'm not a big chip person myself, now, but this way it is the meat and potatoes here. <laughs> But uh, 
just like I like my meat and potatoes. I, I think the big brine shrimp is the meat and potatoes that I drive food for the couples. Um, so personally, for years my dad and I made up a dried food and muso mix. It was really, really, really good stuff. Um, but when Stan Schubel died, his wife Ethel uh, had us take care of uh, the remainder fish. And, uh, and Stan's fish room shut it down. And one of the gifts given to us was Stan's recipe. Um, and if those who do do not know much about Stan Schubel, He's often referred to as the, the, the godfather, the originator of the fancy duck pot. Um, starting with Pet Store, Wild Stock, way back when he was a kid, um, and worked, worked his way up in the creative. A lot of lines that you see out there now, it's a little bit more, I guess in more recent years, it's not so much of the American body style. We're getting some Asian varieties and some other varieties working their way in. But for years, a lot of the strains that were out there were originated by Schubel, had some Schubel genes in them in some way, shape, or form. And Stan really got it down for all these years. He created some monstrous fish. Um, and Stan really got the scientific facts and food and what was needed down to a point. When we got a hold of Stan's secret recipe, which today is still a secret, I'm going to ask for it. Um, it was clear that he knew what he was doing. And with that, um, we decided to stop making our food and move into uh, what he did. Because A, it was working well for him for years, and we could tell by the ingredients in the food that it was great. Now, Stan recognized that he had good food. He used the same thing for many, many years, but as price increased uh, for the supplies and the materials that go into this food, the food items that go into it, he looked for other ways. It was clear there were some other uh, alternative recipes to lower the cost, you know, help his little profit. I know it's his main goal of that food was always kind of to take care of his dry food that he used and also to pay for his brain trim. Um, so he looked a way to cheapen it up without raising the cost um, and use some other foods, which I'm sure were decent. But when my father and I got a hold of the recipe, we decided that we wanted to do something with the hobby. Um, what we made out of it was a little less important to us. We just wanted to get back to his original recipe, which is very expensive, the ingredients. Um, our goal, pretty much, is just to make enough to take care of the cost of my father and I. We use out of each batch our dry food cost the amount that we use. That's all we were hoping to do, not even cover our brain trip at this point, and keep the prices kind of the same. So we did. We do make it. It doesn't come in a fancy container. It comes the same way Stan does. He had some labels at one time. We're probably going to get back to making a label. Comes in a pound, free, one pound freezer bag. Um, and this stuff is, like I said, very, very fine. It's more of a dark brown. You will get some variations from one batch to the other in the darkness of brown. Sometimes we will have a hand at a certain ingredient that makes it a little darker. Uh, we do weigh it out, but sometimes it just seems like something set. <laughs> <laughs> not right, but it's fine. Um, it's a real, almost a powdery substance, and the fish absolutely just love it. This is my breeder rack here. So, we do have it, we still make it, it is $22 a pound. And in terms of dry food, that's the only stuff we feed now. Um, we feed that right towards um, our brine shrimp hatch, uh, hatch feeds, and um, in the middle of the day sometimes, anytime I get extra time, it doesn't take long for me to come in here and throw some food in the tank, so I do. So those are our two main foods that we feed. Um, I also add two to three times a day, uh, a day, a week, I find time to get in here and feed frozen adult line shrimp. And that adds another level to the fish. 
um, the more you can feed that at another that high quality food at more times a week the better it's not quite the same nutrition level as feeding another patch of live baby brain shrimp but it's up there it's something available quick if maybe you have a bad uh, brine shrimp feeding uh, or hatch for some reason or another you can go in the freezer grab it out it's available anytime right in addition to what you may already be doing so for me those are the three foods that's how i do it that's all i feed that is the difference um protein levels on the dry food are round we're figuring right now we're going to get a re we're trying to go off in memory on what when he used to have a label what it used to be. I believe it was 58% protein, which if you look at mine, it's much higher than, than most of anything you're going to see out there. And around 15 to 16% fat, we don't remember exactly what it was um, at the time. But wonderful high quality ingredients, everything in it. And when it comes down to it, my dad and I are not making much. It takes a lot of time to make up a batch. It takes about five hours, four or five hours to make up a batch. Get it in those bags, put it in the freezer so it's ultimately fresh. And that's one thing. If you do want to get this food, you can email us at quality guppies. That's Q-U-A-L-I-T-Y-G-U-P-P-I-E-S. Quality guppies at yahoo.com. Um, we always keep it fresh. You can buy the one pound bag if you don't have a lot of tanks. Do what I do. Even though I have a lot of tanks, I'm trying to keep it fresh. Pull a little bit else in a nice airtight container. Just enough, whatever you're gonna feed for about a week. This whole container I go through in about a week. Um, throw the rest in the freezer. Pull it out, refill your, your container, and you're good to go. So, if you wanna get a hold of some of the dry food, like I said, I think it's far, far superior to the AAM market and the size of the fish that my father and I proved. So prove that and also what Stan has done. We've been feeding for years. When Stan was alive, we were feeding this food besides ours that we made. But like I said, once we seen the ingredients, um, we, it was clear. We just wanted to move into that. So without any further ado, i, I give you an idea of what um, this food is capable of producing. I, I got some exceptionally big fish. I, I'll kind of just take you to the bread and butter tank if you will right now. This tank here is going to be exceptionally large fish. These are born in 522. They got some time to get more calls, but I mean absolutely massive long thick chunky bodies that are going to be able to hold these caudals when they're done growing and these caudals are far from where they're going to be um, you will notice with guppies your biggest fish will not have the biggest caudal at a young age by far uh, they take a lot longer to tail out um, the fish that tails out quick and got a big caudal on them at a young age, those are not going to be nearly as big. Um, so these were born on 522. They got about three more months to grow, and they're just now hitting the stage um, where their bodies have mostly grown, and now their caudals are starting to fill in. That's the way a lot of my lines will grow. Um, so their caudals are just starting to grow in. They got a little ways to go, but these are going to be just absolutely giant fish with huge caudals and um, yeah even for myself I love looking at this tank because I know just how big these are exceptionally big fish um, but um, these are some greens one of my lines of greens and you can just see that round stomach area and these haven't even eaten in about five hours so that give you an idea Here's some 921, these are more just short, chunky, nice big stomach, thick peduncles, spot between the body, you know, your, your stomach area and your caudal. You want that nice and thick so they can carry their, their caudals as they get older. These are some yellows. 
I got growing up. And I got tank after tank I can show you a fish that just, you know, your nice thick bodies and they're, and they're able to hold their paw. Um, more impressive, I, I had a two week period where I was gone on, um, out of the country and unfortunately the person I left to feed didn't come and do their job. So I don't have as many adult fish to show that have the size on them because it was a critical growing section uh, and they missed their 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 feeding. Uh, gosh, the cameras. Not wanting to pick these up the best, but here's some American rings. These are gonna be, God, I wish it would come out clear right now, but it won't. These are gonna be really long big fish as well. So, with that said, it really matters on what you're feeding. Uh, you want to get maximum growth with these thick, thick fish. You really are going to pay to stick to a schedule, be disciplined, I guess is the right word for it. Feed your fish every day. Get up to multiple times a day. Feed the highest quality fish. Don't leave when anybody says that there's any other food out there that's better than brine shrimp, you don't have to feed it because it's expensive and um, this is just as good. <laughs> that's definitely um, false. Uh, there's nothing like baby brine shrimp. And then doing that maybe uh, good quality, high quality dry food and feeding that right before and throughout the day even before even when you're not feeding baby brine shrimp. To pack their guts and get them prepared to absorb the nutrients of the baby brine shrimp. So that's what we do. If you are looking to, to get a hold of some legendary fish fruit, Stan Schubel's original recipe that's, I will say it of all dry food, I think it's the highest quality food on the market. And uh, that's not a biased opinion, that is just, I think, facts that I could prove up as soon as I uh, have this stuff re scientifically evaluate it again and get the nutrients levels. Um, high, high quality ingredients and high quality fish fruit. If you're looking to get some of that quality guppies at yahoo.com, you can get a hold of me. If you'd like to get some of my fish, you can get there. You can look up at me uh, as Quality Space Guppies on Facebook, uh, Tim Musso, yeah, YouTube page for some of my fish. You can check me out there. You can check me out on Aquavit. Guppies 101. I'm available in all these spots. Um, but if you got any direct questions or want to get a hold of some of my food, go the best thing is to email me and we'll go from there. Uh, until we talk again, happy fish keeping, happy holidays, and good luck.